What is going on guys? It is Goofy here here and today we are going to be showcasing the top five caves on Ark Survival Ascended's brand new Scorched Earth map. Now I say top five caves and uh, well there's only five caves on the map pretty much. I mean some may consider some other spots caves but realistically there's only five caves on the map but I'm going to be going from number five to number one and kind of giving you guys a PvP perspective on these caves. I'm going to say these caves look beautiful because we all know they absolutely look stunning, but I am going to tell you what's good about them, what's bad about them, what the pros and the cons are, and which spot I personally would choose myself. But at number five, we have the brand new lava cave inside of the Wyvern Trench. Honestly, an absolutely insane spot to put a cave, but... It is number five for a reason. It is a cool looking cave and a cool spot, but it's just not great. So we come into the entrance here and we are led with a, or we start off with a small little room. Now this is a decent choke, but obviously it's not anything crazy. Once stegos are released and transfers open, this front room is nothing. With terrain turrets, things kind of go out the window and it's a lot harder to raid, but this first room, you can hold it, but it's not great. We keep moving forward down the tunnel, and we have a little bit of a tighter choke. I'm not sure if a stego fits through there, but it doesn't look like it. And it leads into quite a big room. Now, this is probably the best choke of the cave, giving you a lot of room to spam turrets all over the walls and a nice little corridor back here, a little tucked away spot to either put a extra generator or even more turrets that are just going to be very difficult to reach. Now, of course, you have the lava as well. You can put foundations in the lava, making it pretty difficult to get those foundations and get foundation control in this cave. But this is definitely the best choke of the cave. And you keep moving down a little further down here and you got a little bit of a drop down into lava with more room to put turrets. So this room right here, I'd say is the strongest point. If you were going to build this cave, this is the room you want to focus on. But that being said, the next choke is also decent. It's just the entrance is pretty large. Probably can fit a Rex through there. So, you know, whatever. But you can have a lot of room for ceiling turrets in here. This will probably be the last choke. You have probably about three little rooms that you could build. But this spot or this room isn't too bad for a lot of terrain turrets and a decent amount of space just to like kind of spread things out maybe have a little bit of a giga death pit right here something like that so this would be the last choke in my opinion you go over into this little side here you can put a crafting station or tames or whatever it's a decent amount of space this cave is obviously a lot smaller than most of the other caves in our on scorched earth but it does have potential and you keep going, you have another little small room back here. Well, this one's a little bit bigger, but still enough space to put some breeders if you desire. And then you have a little tiny corridor in the back. And that's it. That is the cave. It's a very cool looking cave. With a lot of waterfalls, a lot of water features. Starts lava, goes into water. Very cool looking cave. And, you know, if it was PvE... It might be a different story you know this might be ranked a little higher but from a pvp perspective this is the worst cave on the map but that being said with the current meta of terrain turrets and just how walls are being designed this cave is obviously feasible and can be held by a decent tribe and moving on to number four on this list we have blue ob cave now this cave actually holds an artifact so it's a little higher you know you control this you control people getting tech on the map but this cave is very similar to the lava cave in the way that it's designed a lot of open rooms and a lot of tiny chokes and then you know not the best wall placement afterward but you come in here you have the first little room you know you can put some turrets in here but these are going to be easily ran it's not hard it's very close quarters and you know one terror bird will most likely get most of it but you keep going in and i think the thing about all of these scorch caves is it's long long tunnels a lot of potential to just spam turrets everywhere and you know that's difficult to push sometimes it's gonna take time but it will happen eventually but that's the one thing these caves have going for it and now you come here to the first little turnaround 
And you know, it's not really great. You can put a lot of turrets on the wall, but it's obviously stego and rec sized. It wouldn't be too difficult to push, but you keep going. The one benefit that this cave has above a lot of the other ones is water. You have the ability to breed water tames. Now that doesn't really matter for scorched earth at the moment, but if you do plan on living this once trans living here, once transfers open, then you have the potential for a little bit of water breeding. But yeah, there's not really any choke points in this first room. There's a lot of room to place turrets down and have some, you know, defense capabilities here, but the chokes here are not great. And you keep going, you have a lot of corridors that are all gonna lead down to the same path right here. And this isn't bad. You can place a wall here. It all leads down into one little spot. But again, there is just a big opening. It's not really a condensed choke. So again, Stego, Rex, it's not amazing in the long run. And then you keep moving forward and you have another massive room. No chokes though. Yet again, some water breeding and it does look amazing, but <laughs> not really anywhere to put a proper wall that being said though plenty of room for set up breeders but after this big room you come to probably your first choke of the cave where it condenses from going from three tunnels down to one tunnel and you come into this room this isn't a bad choke yes it's a decent opening and you can fit a lot of tames through here but you have the ability to place a lot of top turrets on the ceilings and all over the walls in the ground this would be a very difficult wall to push especially you're so deep in the cave and at 6x the defenders can easily run out on their own baryonyx their own terror birds their own thylas and just rocket down the fob so this would be your main choke of the cave and yes it's in the very back of the cave so it's not the best and after going from the main choke of the cave you go into the very back room of the cave and it's of course the artifact room nothing really crazy here you can put a small little crafting station but of course being the main choke being this far deep into the cave it's not really anything spectacular and that's why this cave lands at number four that is a strong choke but if it was in the front of the cave you know maybe this would be higher on the list but since it's so far in the back of the cave it doesn't really perform well but that is blue up cave now we are moving on to number three on this list which is church cave now a lot of you guys may see this as maybe too high in the list maybe it should have been one maybe it should have been two but in my opinion church cave is is good but it's not great not anymore compared to number one and number two on this list but more on that later but of course nonetheless church cave is very very solid and even more on asa because the church at the top is crazy the entrances to the church are much smaller, and with the way cryos work, the only way to get fairies in here for control is to drop them through the roof. That's insane to me. But the church is obviously the first line of defense, very easy to find, like control, and very fun to PvP in. Moving down into the cave, we probably have the biggest change to all the caves on this list, and that's this first choke. Of church game now we all knew that it before was super tight corridors here but now they added the ability to have a massive massive wall here with <laughs> i mean an insane amount of terrain turrets to just completely fortify this first room and honestly i think this first room of church cave is the strongest choke in church cave at the moment now church cave has a ton of chokes and a lot of places for walls which makes it super strong even though some of the chokes are stego sized but this first choke is kind of crazy you got pretty much a drop down with the ability to have terrain turrets on the ceilings the walls and even the floor and everywhere with a giga pit if you so desire <laughs> i mean this is a very strong choke but enough on that going down further into the cave of course we have some more chokes going into the first long corridor of the cave now this corridor would just be lined with turrets and it's pretty nice it'd be easy to defend but it's obviously nothing crazy but then we move into the second choke of the cave and honestly this is also a phenomenal choke the problem with all the chokes in church cave is they are stego sized but of course if you're a decent defending tribe the attackers are gonna need some luck but you come into here you have the classic drop down portion of this cave 
but with the new terrain turrets this is going to be a very difficult cave to push and of course you have drops in this cave too which makes it even better but this is a very strong choke we all know this choke it's nothing new but moving down we go into the first fork in the cave nothing crazy here just the ability to have two long corridors of turrets on the left side you have a bit of a better choke now but of course you're leading into a tiny tiny corridor nothing crazy there you down you move down further into the tunnel you have just more places to put tons of turrets all over the walls and then of course you lead into the biggest choke of the cave now this is obviously you can fit a giga right here and there is no concern there but with terrain turrets being the way they are putting terrain turrets all over this ceiling it's going to be near impossible to raid at the moment now obviously once car keys are out and carbos you can throw carbo c4 at turrets and the ceilings and of course you can pt spin them but good luck it's going to be very difficult this is a super strong choke and you know <laughs> good luck but that's pretty much it for the chokes in church cave now obviously the biggest sell point for church cave is the size of the main room you have so much room for breeders so much room for a crafting station for a room war room for everything and i mean the cave just looks absolutely stunning now doesn't it and of course you have the added benefit of the artifacts being in the very very back of the cave meaning you control the element on the server if you lock it down for good but that's pretty much it for church cave now let's head over to number two on this list which is oasis cave now a lot of you guys may be a little surprised to see oasis cave at number two and not at number one but i will explain my reasoning for that on why it's number two not number one um obviously this is a bit of a crazy one a water cave on scorched earth i mean <laughs> what <laughs> but um yeah the entrance is right next to red ob and it is a pretty tiny choke to start at the front you drop down into the water and you have a little bit of a small corridor that's leading into a little bit of a drop down now this in itself is not that great you know you can just put c4 on top of baryonyx and run them at the turrets eventually you're gonna get them all and you can turret cap it now this is obviously very difficult to do on lock servers but once servers are unlocked you know it's gonna get this first room is gonna get pretty quickly ran through now the biggest thing that a lot of people are freaking out over is this next choke you drop down even further and you have this big salt crystal going up that's broken in two but at the bottom of it you have the choke point now this choke point is decent in size but obviously it's very tiny i don't believe a shark will even fit through here so you know you're only seeing terror birds you're only seeing baryonyx come through you're probably carbos as well but then you have a big open room that has a lot of capability to place terrain turrets all over the water here now the reason that i have this at number two and not number one is that yes this spot and this room in particular is very difficult and very shocking for a lot of people to see on scorched earth but eventually and i mean eventually yes raiding in this game takes time and way too much time to be honest something needs to change but eventually this room will fall as it can be turret capped from the top above on the surface so being able to turret cap this from the surface in 1x isn't really great and you know they can just send carbos after carbos after carbos and yes you can bleed them because you can get sharks in here but eventually this room will fall because it can be turret capped any cave in this game that can be turret capped is inherently just a lot worse than anything that can't be so eventually this room will fall now a lot of people might hate my opinion on that but that is my opinion this is obviously the strongest choke and it will take maybe multiple days to raid through but eventually it will fall just because it can be turret capped now we move into the moon pool little area and now this moon pool it's cool it's a moon pool usually moon pools are insane but it leads into a very tiny corridor so honestly not much of a defense capability in this spot you can have turrets in here but these turrets in this small tunnel will eventually get ran and then you move into the main choke point i'd say i mean main land choke point uh of the cave which is this big open area from the water or coming from the water with a bunch of different waterfalls now this is going to be a very difficult choke to push as well with terrain turrets you can place them all over the walls and all over the ceilings but again 
it eventually will get raided. Now this, I'm going to be honest, it doesn't look fun to raid. Now, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I really think that this cave is near impossible to raid. It will get raided that first room, especially with the ability to turret cap it. But this second room, I'm not sure if you can turret cap it. And it's, you know, with terrain turrets, terrain turrets all over the ceiling and the walls. It's going to be very difficult to push. Now, another thing that this cave has going for it is the absolute size of it. And of course, the beauty, because this thing looks absolutely stunning. But this cave is massive. It rivals Church Cave in its size. And you have the ability to put breeders everywhere and use this as a main base location, which is amazing. And of course, <laughs> there's even drops in this cave. So farming drops in here, especially on locked map, isn't a bad option. Um, there's a lot of small corridors and a lot of areas to just put personal rooms, put breeders, put, you know, crafting stations, war rooms, a, a little tiny little bedroom or something. I don't know, whatever you really want to do. But this cave is massive and has two really solid choke points, but it doesn't even come close to number one for me. And at number one, of course, it is Central Cave. Now, a lot of you guys are probably sad that I put Central Cave over Oasis Cave but i have my reasons for that and i'll get into that shortly but obviously central cave is a very very good cave and the main thing that was bad about it before was that you could not place anything down without a cliff blat and that obviously has changed which makes this insane and terrain turrets make this cave honestly impossible to raid you come in at the entrance and right off rip you have a choke point now this choke point obviously can be c-span but with terrain turrets you can put turrets all the way up in this top little like cranny up here and i mean yes it can be c-span but you put like 30 tech turrets in the top there you know spread out obviously and that's you know hundreds of pt spins and you're only on the very first choke of the cave <laughs> I, I, I don't know, guys. Something needs to change with terrain turrets, but that's just the start. You keep moving. That's just the start. You keep moving down into the cave, and you have the signature of Scorched Earth Caves, which is these long tunnels. And, of course, in here, you can just put turrets all over the walls. Obviously, it'll get ran through eventually. You know, just stego rex, push them. But this is, uh, this is a very fun cave to PvP in. I've PvP'd in this cave so many times, and these tunnels are a lot of fun to fight in uh, but you have a lot of room for terrain turrets for ceiling turrets and everything so it would make raiding this a lot longer but you come into the second choke point of the cave now this one is obviously a very big opening it's right before the main choke but you come in here and you have a big room where you can put turrets all over the ceiling all over the walls have gigas down here and have the ability to just jump up grapple people in you know, when car keys are out, jump up, grab the stegos, bring them down here. It's a very good choke point and a lot of fun to PvP at this. But at the end of the day, it's a massive opening and will get raided eventually. But the thing that makes this cave near impossible to raid is the main choke point. Now, this is pretty small. A thyla does fit all the way up until the very end of it, but it doesn't fit through. And that is the biggest thing with the only bleeder in the game that is this size being the thyla obviously carnos can bleed but it's not fitting you have the ability to put stegos and racers right in this room right here and they can't be bled they have to comp arrow them or find another way to kill them and well <laughs> i think i have more stegos than you have comp arrows so <laughs> that's why this is at number one the ability to just block off the ability to let runners through, put a stego right here, and then they can never bleed it because it's too far. Yes, they can come in here and they can play around in here because the stego will LOS your turrets, but grapple them past the stego. Terror birds can't fit through this past the stego. Thylas can't fit through in here. Baryonyx aren't going to fit through. Good luck. Yes, you can PT spin but you're going to get dismounted too quick to get any of the turrets that are going to be on that ceiling right there. Now, that is the biggest thing. Yes, if this cave was like it was before and you had to put one solid wall right here, it wouldn't be amazing. But having the ability to put terrain turrets on all of these walls on the ceiling up here and then just 
block things off good luck raiding this this cave is near impossible to raid and of course with the cryo changes you're never going to be able to get a rex out here again so you can't even tech rex it anymore that's why this cave is at number one and by far the best cave honestly almost in the entire game for me because they left in a very tiny choke point into a massive open room with the ability to put terrain turrets on a ceiling. This cave is by far the number one cave on Scorched and potentially the number one cave in all of Ark at the moment. And of course, this leads into a massive open room with tons of room for breeders and has the artifact at the very bottom, which means if you claim this cave, you can also lock off element for the entire server until transfers open. But that is my top five tier list of caves on Scorched Earth. Let me know if you guys would have had anything different. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys think Oasis Cave is better than Central and why. And let me know how you would raid Central because to be honest, I'm curious. But if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. And of course, my socials are in the description if you want to see me on any other platform. But thank you guys so much for watching. Small tribes coming soon and even more videos on Scorched Earth on the way. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.